the gates are closing to what a friend of mine, David Dredge at Convex Strategies calls a, a sharp world. Basically this fake accounting construct that we have in the financial and economic world where you follow all these rules and all these accounting rules and make up all these numbers and claim that you're making money. But in an economic sense, when we deflate everything either by the Fed's balance sheet or global center banking balance sheets or the price of energy like hydrocarbons, most people have lost money in real terms investing in just about every financial asset. And people are starting to recognize that. That's why crypto is up so much in the best performing you know, asset since 2008, essentially when we had the global financial crisis. And the, the, the great thing about this particular episode of, of Fiat the Basement and governments have been doing this even before Rome, which is printing fake money, handing it out as if it means something. And when you get into trouble, you just print more of it. We're not doing anything new. We have computers that, that, that do it now in ones and zeros, but it's, it's literally the same thing. But for the first time ever, the people have a way out. We have Bitcoin. We have this new financial system, which can run a whole, you know, stocks, bonds, tokens, whatever you want to call it. We can run all this stuff on a decentralized network ourselves. And we can take our capital and move it out of TradFi and into DeFi, into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, into other different types of primitives and tokens and whatnot. So for the first time, we have an escape hatch. And now that people are recognizing that, oh shit, all this capital is just not going to sit there in the banking system and be ripe to be stolen from by governments who need to inflate away this debt, we have an exit. The world is waking up to the debasement of currency and billions of dollars is going to flow into Bitcoin and crypto. Over the past few decades, most people have lost money in real terms, investing in virtually every single asset on the planet. All because of the devaluation of the dollar as governments continue to print more money. That's the message out from crypto veteran Arthur Hayes. Arthur Hayes has made hundreds of millions of dollars in crypto and has almost a decade's worth of experience in the space. In his latest interview, he breaks down why he thinks we are on the brink of a collapse of the current financial system and why crypto is going to benefit as a result. He also speaks on the coming Bitcoin ETFs and why he believes it will turn out to be a sell the news event. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Arthur breaks down why out of all crypto, he's most bullish on Ethereum. Also guys, if you want to stay most up to date on the crypto and Bitcoin world, make sure to subscribe to my daily 5 minute crypto newsletter. It gives the latest expert predictions, any breaking news and top on chain analysis all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description to join over 40,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. Now here's Arthur Hayes with his cycle prediction. And so now it's time to convince people that things like a Bitcoin ETF in the West and whatever they're going to call it over in you know, the Chinese uh, financial system system is the way to escape, but you're not really escaping, you're just giving your money to somebody else who's in the, the TradFi system. So that's sort of this uh, push and pull that's going on right now. And obviously we're starting to see the price of Bitcoin uh, react positively, you know, since the FTX debacle in, you know, November of 20, was it November, November of last year, Bitcoin went from 16,000 to, was it now 45,000, 44,000, whatever it is, right? And all the while, the banks are supposedly not printing, but they are printing money. If you actually look at how much money is going into the banking system or interest payments on government debt, it's very stimulative. And that's what Bitcoin is telling us. And now Bitcoin, and I guess tech stocks, a magnificent seven in the United States. And those tech stocks are on a tear because liquidity is there for the right type of thing. So I think that this is sort of, 2024 is gonna set up to be the choppy period where it's time to accumulate before you get the blow off top in 2025 and 2027. That's really how I'm approaching the world right now. So I think we're coming to a head this time because, you know, the Fed and other central banks, every single um, financial crisis, they've essentially started to inflate another bubble. The last bubble and the most important is the government bond markets, which have been inflated since COVID times. And now we're starting to see that break down. We're starting to see the correlation between stocks and bonds flip where people are now starting to be concerned about, okay, well, how much money do all these large governments have to print in order to make good on these promises they made to the people that they control? And it doesn't make any sense. It's unsustainable at, you know, 360% debt to global GDP. You're at a, over 100%. The debt's growing faster than you can service it unless we find some new energy miracle. It's mathematically going to fail. And 
the investing class is starting to realize that right now because you've seen you know, a 30 year US Treasury bond is down 50% in price terms from August of 2020 until today. That's absolutely a bloodbath. And so as people start to contextualize that and realize that this 60 40 portfolio risk parity or all these things that they believed about the volatility uh, reducing it and uh, return enhancing aspects of government bonds is doesn't work anymore in a new global environment that is inflationary and not us led then all this capital needs to find a new home you know obviously some people are going to choose gold but there's a lot of people who are younger like well I don't believe in gold, but I believe in my smartphone and what I can do on the computer. This makes more sense to me, this being crypto. So I think people need to think, what's your goal? Is my goal to buy a financial asset to make more fiat? Or is my goal to save in a hardened energy currency that's outside of the system and, and a different financial network? So choose one. If you want to trade and earn more fiat, Great. A Bitcoin ETF is great, depending on where your capital is housed. Maybe you have a bunch of fiat that's sitting in a retirement account or it's managed by somebody and there is just no way for you to get that money out and buy physical Bitcoin. I get it. Cool. It's a trading vehicle. It is not a store value. It is not a new financial system. You aren't escaping the system. You're just trying to earn more filthy pieces of fiat. Cool. Use the ETF. If you want to actually have financial freedom and a store of value that maintains its purchasing power and energy has it comes with its own financial system that is outside of, of TradFi, then you must buy Bitcoin, withdraw it from the exchange and self-custody it in your own wallet. That's, there are the only two choices, but you have to think about what you're trying to do. If this happens and I'm still on the fence of whether or not, I don't know, some people are saying it's early January, whatever it is, there's some date next year that the ETF happens. So they're gonna announce, okay, Bitcoin ETF is approved. It starts trading on, you know, maybe a week or two later. I don't know how, how quickly these things happen. And the price is going to go fucking bananas. It's going to go up so much because people think that all of a sudden, as soon as the ETF opens, there's going to be this rush of, you know, creations into all these people who wanted to buy Bitcoin for the last, I don't know, over a decade or all of a sudden, you know, all like, rush into these ETFs and then BlackRock and all these guys are going to be having these lift offers everywhere and buy all this Bitcoin. That's not going to happen. Money was going to flow in, but it's not going to flow in to the extent that people expected to initially, at least. And so I think it's a buy the rumor, sell the fact kind of situation if you're a, a short term trader. Over the long term, you know, if we really are witnessing a mindset shift of the 60 40 portfolio, which is, I believe it's 60% equities, 40% bonds, one yeah. to, whichever one it is, if that is really dead and investment managers start to believe that, and people are still being taught that uh, in school and, you know, schools like where I went to school, Wharton and, you know, Columbia Business School and Chicago and all these places, that's said to be the thing that are taught to kids and investment managers. Then we're going to see a lot, trillions and trillions of dollars worth of bonds that are no longer, want, no longer going to be owned. That money is going to flow into crypto and it'll be, you know, flow into one of these ETFs because as an investment manager, again, you're trying to earn more fiat, not trying to uh, support a new financial system. So you're going to use one of these derivatives to get your exposure. So I am a, I guess, pseudo ETH maxi. My thesis is the Ethereum network has the most amount of developer talent and energy surrounding it. Uh, it has obviously a very large market cap compared to other layer one decentralized blockchains, decentralized compute blockchains. And I think that moat is insurmountable from others because whatever others do they say oh there's this one part of what ethereum does i can do it better faster whatever it is i'm going to launch a new chain and you know investors who have gotten in early have done very very well but on the first run up but can these networks actually deliver and get as many people as possible to build on their chain versus uh, ethereum which is different than saying there is a uniswap or a dex on eth constant product amm on eth I'm just going to launch one on Solana, on Say, on Avalanche, on pick your fucking layer one blockchain. I'm just going to copy and paste what I originally did on Ethereum. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be some original primitives de developed on these other chains, but as of right now, the majority of the creativity starts in Ethereum and then just copy paste it into these other chains. And maybe these other chains are able to optimize one particular facet of the, of the DeFi 
uh, economy, but I don't think any of them have the whole package. So Solana, obviously very good marketing. A lot of the, the actual applications built on top of it have very, very good UX, like the Phantom Wallet and, and stuff like that. Very, very energized community and coming out of the whole, you know, SBF, FTX debacle have sort of like re-energized this chain and the thing has gone from like $7 now it's close to a hundred bucks or whatever it is right now. So it's a great momentum play. And so I jumped on momentum play as a trader and tried to hype it up because that's what I do. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I bought soul as a trading vehicle. I'm going to sell it and take the profits and do something else. And maybe I'll rebuy if, if it corrects down, you know, 40 or $50. Uh, again and write it up again because th there is a lot of energy there people really believe in this and you can't not trade it i like these sort of things that's a great thing about crypto it's so trend momentum focused that if you just buy in buy into that vertical chart um you can make some money in terms of decentralized compute power i don't think ethereum is money so i know that wrinkles some in the ETH community i believe that bitcoin is the only real crypto money Ethereum is the decentralized computer and it's a commodity that runs this decentralized computer. And they're two distinct different things. Um, I believe that in 2016, Ethereum community proved that they care about the computer more than they care about money. When after the DAO hack, they rolled back the blockchain to give people back their ETH because they cared more about the computer gaining uh, attraction and use case versus ETH being money, which is fine. You know, choose the vertical that you want to play in. It's fine that it's just a computer and not it's and not money and so that's sort of my market taxology on on these sort of things if that got in the way if ETH got too expensive and gas fees were too expensive then they would do something to change that because they care about usage and so yes it's deflationary right now but that can change it was inflationary before and they changed it to deflationary so they changed the monetary policy to suit their goals. If they believe that's going to further the use of the computer, that's what the community is going to decide. If it needs to go back to inflationary again at some point in the future, I believe the community will decide to do that because it wants the ETH EVM to be the most used decentralized computer versus being the hardest form of cryptographic money. So there's Arthur Hayes. It's clear that the world of cryptocurrency is rapidly evolving and presenting unique opportunities for savvy investors. Arthur's expertise gained by nearly a decade in the crypto space and his success in making hundreds of millions of dollars in this field offers a rare and valuable perspective on the future of digital currencies. His thoughts on the potential collapse of the current financial system and the pivotal role of cryptocurrencies, especially Ethereum, in shaping the future financial landscape are thought-provoking. His commentary on Bitcoin ETFs and their potential market impact reflects a deep understanding of both traditional and digital financial markets. Remember, the crypto world is dynamic and staying informed is key to navigating it successfully. That's why my daily 5-minute crypto newsletter is an essential resource for anyone interested in cryptocurrency. It's packed with expert predictions, breaking news and top on-chain analysis, offering you a comprehensive view of the crypto landscape in a concise format. To join over 40,000 others who are enhancing their crypto investment strategies, click the first link in the description and subscribe to my newsletter. You'll be joining a community of informed investors who are staying ahead in the ever-changing world of crypto. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.